Kyle Gibson doesn't just make his pitch, the Minnesota Twins starting pitcher targets the game inside the game, arming his heart, mind, and emotion, while the six-year veteran takes the stage in baseball's performance-based business. From the time where uh, I'm sitting in my locker when I'm listening to, to worship music, honestly, and really trying to make sure that my heart's in the right spot, I always feel like that that circle out there, it's not who I am, it's just part of what I'm here to do. And I'm gonna face a lot of situations throughout the game that if my heart's not in the right spot, the decision I make is probably gonna be a bad decision. What you said for what you might face, do I then presume that that's anxiety? Sure. Is that fear? It's all the above, you know, it, uh, it's a stressful situation where if you're not prepared for it, you could make the wrong decision pitch-wise. It could be, you know, maybe you have to show grace after an error in the field or you have to you know, show a little bit of humility after a home run. You just want to make sure that your mind and heart's in the right spot. Next to the arm, what is the most critical component to be a successful starting pitcher? <sighs> if you talk to 10 people, you might get 10 different answers. You know, I think the legs are important. I think, you know, the torso is important. Over the last year and a half, I really kind of feel like uh, the mind is probably the next important thing. You know, you can feel as good as you want, but if you get that mind right, it just changes everything. You can have the confidence behind what you're doing, and if, if I don't have the confidence in the pitch that I'm going to be throwing, uh, I might as well not throw it. What do you think would surprise us the most? How sometimes it's difficult to handle situations that you can't control. In this park in the summer, obviously you can't control which way uh, the wind is blowing. Uh, and sometimes a routine fly ball to right becomes a home run, and sometimes a uh, home run to left becomes a routine fly ball. So once you throw the ball, you can't control if that umpire misses the call or gives you a call. Being able to, to handle those situations constantly that you have no control over is pretty tough. Has that been helpful for you in your Christ following? In times, I think it's just like a lot of things in life. The more you practice it, the better you get at it. You know, it's really my love from Christ that helps me in those other situations. It's the grace that He's given me that allows me to hopefully show grace most of the time on the mound and do that in my relationship, you know, versus practicing that on the mound and taking it home. And as soon as you release that ball, there is that surrender. Yeah, you have to be able to be okay sometimes with results that aren't mm -hmm. what you planned on. And one of them is you can easily get caught up in numbers in this game. And it's easy to look at yourself as an ERA or a strikeout total and kind of determine your worth. How have you been freed from that? Oh, wow, that's a good question. One of the lies that, you know, uh, has been tough for me to get rid of, but I've had to get rid of is I can't think of myself as an ERA or even a jersey number or anything like that because it's just a lie. My identity is in Christ, and that's really my identity. You have to be able to leave those lies behind um, because the more you start believing in those lies, the less you're going to believe in the actual truths about yourself. What does the Christ follower and the elite competitor have in common? I think they can have everything in common. Paul is one of my favorite guys to read uh, from the Bible just because of everything he went through. And he talked multiple times about running the race and everybody that runs the race is supposed to run to win. You complete it as if you're completing a task from God. There was a couple times where I started showing a little bit more emotion on the field. And one talk that I had with you know, our GM and uh, another one of our front office, and, and they said, listen, we know that you're a man of faith and those things don't have to separate. I think they're as intertwined as you want them to be. You know, walk off the mound and do everything with as much love as possible. And sometimes having that little competitive edge isn't a bad thing. Got to get you a tearaway jersey. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> That'd go that's over right. well. <laughs> Possibly not, but I like <laughs> it. Yeah, possibly not. I have a lot of explaining to do. I've noticed when you sign, you will add a scripture. What is that scripture and why? It's Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. There's good of representation of the gospel and what I'm really trying to do in life as I found. It's for it is by grace you've been saved through faith, not of works so that no one can boast. It's a gift from God. We are God's handiwork created by Him to do the good works that He set out in advance for us to do. This is what I'm here to do. You know, I'm, I've been put here to put this verse and, and to do the work that God set out in advance for me to do.